Gracias. 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 Good morning, everybody. My name is Kurt Sensky, and it's a privilege for me to serve as the Chief Executive Officer of Upring. Upring is a 136-year-old faith-inspired organization, uh, and our mission here in the state of Texas and Louisiana is to break the cycle of child abuse by empowering children, families, and communities. New Hope is a very important part of uh, our mission. And um, similar to some of the children that we care for uh, at our residential treatment center, our foster homes who may have been removed for opioid addiction, uh, these children also come uh, from a, a very difficult journey. And our staff here are committed to praying for them. They're committed to providing them with case management services. They're committed to education. They're committed to providing everything a child needs in order to be successful. One of the, uh, what we've experienced, uh, Mrs. Trump, is that uh, the evidence uh, demonstrates that for any child to be successful, whether it's your child or my child or a child in Texas or a child here at New Hope, is that we need to surround them with what we call at Upring the five markers of success. So that's safety, safety's first, life skills, health, and health would be emotional health, trauma-informed care, spiritual health, as well as physical health. Education, you'll see at our charter school later, and then vocation, so that every child has that opportunity to live out his or her call. So we appreciate both you and, and, and Secretary Azar to, to be here today. Uh, we're honored to show you our shelter. Uh, it's a shelter that currently cares for 58 children, uh, children who come from very difficult journeys, and uh, we treat them like our own children. So with that, I'm going to uh, allow the Secretary, of course, to, to say a few words in, and to introduce our special guest. Well, uh, Dr. Sensky and uh, Roy de la Cerda uh, as program director here, and to all of you, thank you so much for, for welcoming us here. Uh, I just wanted you to know how very grateful we are at the Department of Health and Human Services for the work that Upring does for these children, and we're delighted to hear more about it and hear more about your sense of passion and mission and what you do. Uh, we're privileged to be with you, and I'm, I'm just delighted that the First Lady is spending is spending today with us and going to get to to meet your children uh, and meet you and hear from you. So thank you very much, and uh, Mr. Trump, give it over to you. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm glad I'm here, and I'm looking forward to seeing and meeting children. But first of all, uh, let me begin to recognize each of you and thanking you for all what you do, uh, for your heroic work uh, that you do every day, and uh, what you do for those children. We all know they are having, they're here without their families. And uh, I want to thank you for your hard work your compassion and your kindness you're giving them in these difficult times. I'm here to learn about your facility and which I know you house children on a long-term basis. And I also like to ask you how I can help to these children to reunite with their families uh, you know, as quickly as possible. So thank you again for all what you do, and uh, thank you as well. Thank you all for what you do. Thank you very much. And uh, please, if you could say a few words. Absolutely. Uh, again, thank you, Dr. Sensky, Secretary Zara. First Lady, thank you for, for being here. Um, what we'll do now is that uh, everyone around the table here can introduce themselves and uh, give a brief uh, role of what it is that you all do within your agencies. Let me start with that one here. Yes, sir. I'm Brian Harrison. I'm the Deputy Chief of Staff for Secretary Azar at the Department of Health and Human Services. I'm Manuel Padilla, Jr. I'm the Chief Patrol Agent for the U.S. Border Patrol. Uh, in our role, we're the uh, first uh, that encounter the uh, many unaccompanied children that come into our country. Good morning. My name is Maggie Wynn. I'm a counselor to Secretary Azar, and I work with the program that funds shelters like Upbringing Here. Good morning. My name is Mayra Sanchez. I'm the lead clinician here. We provide all the mental health services and the support while they're in their journey and upon the reunification. 
My name is Paloma Pustamante. I'm the lead case manager here. Um, our, uh, my role here is in reunification. Um, my name is Fadi Van Felix. I'm the shelter unit manager, and I take care of the everyday operations with the children. Good morning. Uh, I am Beatriz Mejia. I'm the medical care coordinator for our Bring Here New Hope. We do the health screening for each uh, unique uh, health children. Hello, good morning. My name is uh, Crystal Gonzalez. I'm the lead teacher aide. I make sure to um, these kids to get the best education we can give them so they can have a successful life. Hello, good morning. My name is Nora Yanis Cavazos. I am with HHS ORR, and I work with the program in reviewing the cases of the children who will be reunified with their family members and sponsors. My name is Jose Gonzalez, and I'm the field specialist supervisor for the Division of Unaccompanied Children Operations. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. I heard you have like 58 children here. Uh, have 55. 55? Yes. Oh, we're so, oh, <laughs> so we're always playing with that number. <laughs> oh, that's great. So three of them, they already reunited with the families. And those children, how many times they speak with their relatives or families per week, for example? Well, the, the children are allowed to communicate with their family twice, twice a week. Mm -hmm. uh, they get a 10-minute phone call. Uh, but first, we have to ensure that the persons that they're in contact with their families are indeed their family. So there is a process. We have to follow all of or our policies and regulations uh, and make sure that we identify, positively identify, that the persons that they're communicating with are indeed their family. And that could be through verification of birth certificates, photo identification. Uh, but they do communicate uh, with, with their families. So when the children come here, what kind of stage, uh, you know, physical and mental stage they come here? Do are they distract? So what you would say the percentage how they come here? Well, no, okay. So usually um, the great majority are Guatemalan. It's a, it's a higher percentage rate. Um, usually when they get here, they're very distraught in the sense that they don't know where they're at. They're thinking that they're going to continue in the process of, of just the processing them. And when they see the environment and they see the other kids and they see the art, they start relaxing. So the first 24 hours are crucial for us, you know, make, making sure that we got them the basic needs, showers, you know, uh, clothing, food, and before we even start the assessment. And within those 24, 24 hours, our unit shelter managers in charge of, you know, doing a brief update as to what's going on with them. That way we can address it immediately. And then eventually every department takes a turn to be able to further assess the needs of the kids. So it's a, it's a little, it's a process. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. Yes. Yes. But I've heard they're very happy and they love to study. Absolutely. They love to go to school. Uh, you know, absolutely. Uh, again, when the, when the children first get here, uh, you know, it is a process. They go through. Uh, an orientation. They go through a 24-hour initial intake. So this is where uh, we get to we get as much information as we possibly can from the children. Uh, again, to assess and make sure that uh, we're not missing anything. Uh, if there's an immediate uh, medical need that is immediately addressed, if there's an immediate uh, uh, mental health issue or that needs to be addressed, we bring in our clinicians uh, and then we take it from there. Uh, you know, after. Uh, uh, they do an orientation. They go through several orientations. Uh, they'll go through our, the shelter. They will go through case management orientation. Then they'll also go through clinical orientation. So they uh, will get a of understanding of their current placement. And again, this is to inform them and keep them uh, as calm as possible and to reassure them that they are in a safe place, that they will be well taken care of here, that they're, they're, they, are, they don't have anything to worry about. Now they're in a safe environment. Uh, Free from abuse, yes. uh, you know, and then you know every day is something new with the children. Uh, we provide a lot of structure here um, during the the Monday through Friday schedule. They do uh, attend class, and we try to uh, educate them. We try to uh, assimilate them to what the public uh, school education system is going to be like. Mm -hmm. So, and then we also integrate uh, recreational activities. Uh, spiritual care for the children, um, downtime for them, uh, you know, it's, it, it, this is their home, you know, and, and, and it's, you know, I, they refer to these as shelters, but it is really a home. 
for the children. This is their house. So their bedrooms are their bedrooms. Uh, and as you will see, uh, First Lady, when we do the tour, you'll see the children and then you'll see the smiles on their faces and you'll hear them giggle. And it's just fantastic. Uh, I can, you know, the staff that we have here, uh, we just have a tremendous passion for working with these children. Uh, and we see them uh, as if they were our own. Uh, you know, again, we do uh, maintain boundaries and we do uh, follow all the or our policies and guidelines. But uh, the, again, just the passion that is there in, in working with these children, uh, ensuring that they're safe, and ultimately reunifying them with their families. How long is the, the time that's the max time that somebody spent here that they reunite with the family? Okay, right now, we are averaging currently 42 to 45 days. Oh, okay. uh, so it, it's not uh, an extended right. uh, stay, uh, and we're always following over our policies and procedures and guidelines as far as uh, reunification are uh, concerned with the children, but uh, the average length of stay currently is between 42 and 45 days. Madam First Lady, there is some occasions where um, some children do not have anybody to go back to. Um, and then uh, at the, those situations, they are further assessed by the legal service provider that um, can help identify if they qualify for some type of legal relief. Um, and eventually some children will move on to refugee status um, and not unaccompanied uh, children. And again, it's, it's few and far between, but we do have that process where, you know, some children do not have anybody to go to, whose families have been killed, um, murdered, in, in, in just different, very tragic situations. And um, hopefully when you get to speak some of the children, uh, to a couple of the children today, you'll, you'll see that, um, that there's not hope for them to go back to a, to a country that they're, that they're leaving. So um, we get a broad spectrum. We have kids that come into custody. Um, and are reunified rather quickly if everything is in order. And then we have some children that will unfortunately, um, and fortunately, uh, stay within the system for a number of years until they can qualify for refugee status and move on to our, our, our other sister program, which is the Unaccompanied Refugee Minor Program. So uh, these children, most of them come here alone, without parents? The in majority of our center, children, yes, yes ma'am, they, they are unaccompanied mm -hmm. and uh, uh, were detained mm -hmm. by uh, DHS and, and Border Patrol for the majority. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's a big part of who we are and who yes. we work with, yes Because they are between 12 and 17 years old, right? So yes. it's yes. kind of, they kind of understand, they, they know yes, where they are. So yes ma'am. They're yeah. not like young, young children. Yes ma'am, that's correct. Do, do you have the capability to take care of younger children here, younger than 12? Our, our license, our state license, uh, does allow us to take children uh, up until as young as six, uh, but for the current uh, census right now, or are has asked us to stay within the 12 to 17 range. And Mr. Secretary, oftentimes we'll place younger children in our foster homes. Could you explain that process, uh, how, how you do that? Sure, sure. So um, at the time of detention um, or apprehension, um, we work very closely with our partners over at, uh, at Homeland Security, and they identify you know, young children from, let's say, zero to five years old. And we have a series of uh, a network of foster homes throughout the United States that are licensed in that particular state to work with children from zero to five years old. Um, and it's a family setting um, that, that these kids work in. And again, the same standard applies. We assess them for any medical need or um, any uh, serious complication where we may have to use doctors, hospitals in that situation because the, we, we get every type of child in our custody. Somebody who's non-mobile, non-verbal um, to, uh, you know, somebody whose mom may have, you know, perished in the in the real ground or something like that here in South Texas. So um, those kind of kids are taken care of very special um, circumstances and, and they're throughout the United States also. And we as Uppering have foster care programs in Corpus Christi as well as El Paso and as of today are currently serving around 100 children in those programs. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to meeting children and to
tour the facility. So thank you very much again for all that you do. Thank you. Um, what we'll do now is we all can wait for this year. An information uh, board for the children, so this will allow this uh, allows them to know what their daily schedule is going to be like. Uh, it identifies their week, uh, also the rules of the facility, and then their daily activities. And this will change daily, so the children know exactly what they're going to be doing throughout the day. And of course, we have our own rules. Yeah. Uh, they, they keep it very, very they keep organized. It very organized. They, they keep up with their rules. Yeah. They do their own dance and they do their own okay. thing. I mean, we do have a system for how to do that. For the most part, children uh, maintain their rules. They do a fantastic job. They take ownership while they're here. Uh, and a lot of times they say, wow, this is my bed. Wow, they never had a bed for themselves. And they're absolutely, mm -hmm. this is your bed while like you're here. One of, one of our few complaints we get from them is that you stay here conditioned. So they think it's cold in here. Yes, guys, guys, guys. They do not think about it. Absolutely. Yeah. So if we can walk on over to another room here, we can walk in. Sir. Follow this gentleman here. Follow the red Make sure you give room into the hallway service when you go in. 